my name is Larry, and I am going to be demonstrating the scenery shears. Right now I'm doing a number four fade for this gentleman. I'm using a number four guard for the sides and the back, and I'm going to blend the top into the sides and back with the sinewy shears. So it's always best to wet the hair a bit. It's much easier to work with. Just don't drown the client. I've had them tell me before they already took a shower. I did take a shower. <laughs> so so right now I'm going to blend this, like I said, I'm going to blend the sides and back. And the hardest part of this haircut would be blending the sides and the back. Yeah, the top part is just going to be layered. So right now, the best way to do it, I like to do it, is comb it forward. And try to blend. Just comb it forward and start cutting the number four into the rest of the hair. As you can see, it starts to blend. Right here, where I haven't cut, you can see it's making a lump. So I go up in there, and I'll cut that part off to make it blend. Now, so you can see it's starting to blend. Okay, and how are the shears working for the you? The shears are fine. The shears are make, actually making me faster. Two reasons, they're nice and sharp, and the other is that they're a longer shear. The longer the shear, the faster you're going to be. But the more, you've got to be careful because the more likely you are to cut yourself if you're not used to them. And the customer frowns when you cut the ear, too. If the customer will not be happy if they got to go home with a band aid. They don't need that. Anytime you're using a trying out a new shear, you want to take your time, that's for sure. Okay, same thing as I go into the back, I just keep checking and blending and when you pull a lot of times you can do comb over scissor when you do that don't come straight up come a little bit forward or a little bit backwards and then when it lay it'll lay better that way so larry if you had purchased that pair of shears online uh, would you be keeping them or sending them back you know, I like them right now. I actually like them. Uh, I would probably keep them. Again, they're, to me, they're, I like them a lot. They're going to take some getting used to because they're a little longer than the ones I normally use, but I was just thinking I needed a longer pair. It's funny, my uh, coworker and I were just talking about, about how he uses a longer pair, and I was think, thinking I'd like to get a longer pair just this, just this morning. Okay, again, you can see how it's starting to blend there. And I work up to the top, and all I'm going to do here is layer. Blend. And I'm going to come around the back. Sometimes you can see just a little bit of that has been blend. I lift up with the comb, snip off the edges. Just follow around the back. doesn't really matter where you start when you're doing this part of the haircut, but I started on the sides and the back because that's the hardest part. I wanted to just demonstrate that first. And how long have you been cutting hair? I tell people I've been cutting hair. Most people have been cutting hair longer than they've been alive, but that's pretty much the truth. I've been cutting hair for 42 years. Started down in Canyon City, Colorado. I moved to Denver in 1983, and I've been here ever since. So for a new person starting in the business, what would you give them for advice? Well, I'd like to I'd give them a lot of different kinds of advice. The one thing is never sacrifice quality for quantity. The speed will come. Every hairstylist wants to be wants to get faster and faster. The faster you are, the more money you make. That's all there is to it. But the speed will come, so don't sacrifice quality for quantity. Another thing I tell new, new people, uh, I suggest that they do, and it really doesn't have anything to do with cutting hair, but it has dealing with people. 
is to keep a journal because you're going to meet so many different people when you do here that you have a journal you can write down about all the different people. I've worked on movie stars, athletes, even Miss America, Marilyn Vanderbilt, I did her hair. And uh, so you never know who you're going to meet, so it's nice to write these things down. And people look at me like, what? Keep a journal? And it really is, I guarantee it's a great idea. Probably every hairstylist who's been doing hair, even 20 years, could write a book about their different experiences. Okay, so using a quality shear that's well sharpened, uh, that'll help you with the speed, which helps you make more money? Absolutely. Quality shear that's well sharpened is probably the most important tool you're going to have. But the absolute most important tool because you're going to be working on men, women. You use your, you use your clippers a lot, but you're going to use your, if you're going to do full service, you're going to be working on a lot of women. So you've got to have it. Is this the most important tool you're going to have right there? Again, I'm going into the side again, trying to blend. So what I like to do is come it forward, cut it that way, and blend it in. And then when it comes back, it flows right in. I always tell people, cut the hair the opposite way it's going to go. Like if it's going to lay in a layered pattern, if it's longer, you come up here and cut it. Sometimes you cut it this way, it's going to lay like this. You don't cut it, like if you're going to have longer hair, you don't cut it down here, you cut it up here and let it flow. That's the same thing I'm doing here. He doesn't wear his hair, he doesn't wear his hair going down. You probably comb, you comb it over, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Okay, so. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to comb it. I'm going to comb it the opposite way of what it goes, because I can blend it that way. And for me, coming from the crown forward is the easiest way to blend, to blend hair. Even if they wear it straight back, I still cut it this way. The opposite way of the way they're going to wear it. Then, when she, you're cutting women's hair particularly, do you uh, ever do it dry? Sometimes. Mostly when it's just, they just want to trim on the ends. A lot of women will come in and just want a couple inches off the very ends. They want the split ends off. They have hair, you know, down their shoulders. Chances are they're going to have split ends. I tell them to get in here four to six weeks, no more than eight weeks if they want to have the minimum amount cut off. So. That's, uh, that's a good, good idea. The rule of thumb, four to six weeks. Did you check it on? Now we got him just about done here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the hair. Like I said, I cut it, I cut it coming down. Because that's the easiest way for me to layer it and to, to blend it. But, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go the way he combs it. Do you have anything this morning? Um, well, we check it that it way. It's got a little bit of a cowlick here. You can when a person has a cowlick like that, I like to tell them, try to tell them how to comb it so it doesn't, that's to keep it from sticking out. A lot of times when people like to comb like this, that's going to make it stick out. So what you do is you kind of comb it forward, comb it the way it grows, and then come down. So, see it's laying down. So Larry, did you learn that in cosmetology school or did you learn that on the job? My, I learned it on the job. Matter of fact, at cosmetology school you'll learn a certain way to cut hair, but ultimately every hairstylist that's been around has developed their own method of cutting hair. Every single hairstylist you talk to has developed their own way, even to hold scissors, uh, just to cut hair in general. Yeah, I, I've, sometimes you take this and you cut this way down to the quick, and that obviously, but in his case, he doesn't want it that short, so what I tell people to do, yeah, turn it all forward, find the spot where it wants to once the part come it all forward and down like that, and then come across. And they won't, they won't leave. And then you go through the thing, and you look around, and you can spot what still needs to be touched up. And a long 
piece in there. All right, he's looking pretty good, Larry. Thank you, Senor. So, and then, once you've cut hair long enough, you can, you can pick out any spot that's longer than the other one. So yeah, I like these. I like these shears. They're, they're okay, really that's nice. a Sayuri shear. Sayuri shear. And they seem to be set just right, because what you like is when you put them like that, that they come down. They're a little tiny bit tight for my liking, but they're, they cut very I, nice. I like to tell people that the shear should be an extension of their hand. That's exactly what it is. It really is. It's just second nature after you, you know, you be cutting along and you just throw that get the hair in there. The comb just goes in there so automatic, you can hardly even see it once you've done it long enough. And you pull it out, cut it. If you think about it, it actually takes you longer to do it than if you're, if you're not thinking about it. This becomes second nature, and yes. All right, well, he looks good. Thank you. What do you think? Think I might be able to get him to come back? Well, is he smiling? He's right looking, guys. <laughs> smiling. All right, cool. Just on the shoulder.